So today is Tuesday and um, I get to work around 6.20, 6.30 every day. Morning, how are you doing? The number of patients we've had and the acuity intensity of their condition has necessitated us to have more staff. We have a lot of people floating from the system flex team, so I don't always know everybody. Nice to meet you. And then are you? Ashley. Ashley, welcome, you guys. So good to see you. We never had a proning team before. Proning is putting somebody to sleep on their belly and still on a ventilator. But what we found with our COVID patients is sometimes we actually leave them a lot longer because we see that it improves their oxygenation. She's so sweet. Aww. And Laverne, she works nights. I get energized by being around people. Normally, I exercise a lot, so I'm getting my exercise just by walking right now. Most days I can put on about 7,000 to 10, 12,000 steps, sometimes in four or five hours. Okay, thank you, night shift. I hope you all had a good night. Did y'all have an okay night? Yeah? Oh, good. And for your first nights, it was all oh, good. That's what we want to hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So our first COVID patient was on um, the 13th of, of March. But we typically have about 13 patients between the two units that are positive. Okay, I'm going to end, let's end it with a prayer today. Ready? Um, dear God, even as our faces disappear, we pray that a deep abiding awareness of our purpose will remain. The roots grounded far beneath the surface of our spirits. Unite us as the forest of faith that we will not fail. Amen. Okay, y'all, have a great day. So I get in about 8.30 uh, or 8.20ish. Uh, I get on my scrubs, get ready for the day, come to the office, uh, get ready for a huddle, print off the census for uh, my units. We'll be back. So, Aaron, would you start us off today with a reflection, please? Yes, sure. It's called For a Friend on the Arrival of Illness. Now your time on earth becomes full of threat. Before your eyes, your future shrinks. You lived absorbed in the day-to-day, -day, so continuous with everything around you, that you could forget you were separate. Now this dark companion has come between you. Distances have opened in your eyes. You feel that against your will, a stranger has married your heart. Nothing before has made you feel so isolated and lost. Good morning. Palliative care is a, a, a symptom management, and as a chaplain, you know, there are spiritual and emotional issues that uh, patients have uh, and families may be having, experiencing at this time. So I, I go in and, and explore their, um, their emotional needs and validate their emotions of, of sadness and, and grief. Um, Mr. Gillis, 208. Aaron, and, um, this family is so appreciative of your involvement. So he is, has been extubated. Did okay. Um, I think he was on BiPAP last night. I'm so glad you got a good visit with him. It's been, it's been quite a, quite a long time. How long has it been since he's? It's been almost three weeks since. Um... How, how do you feel? Seeing him come back, I feel wonderful. Oh yeah. Well, thank you for sharing with me, uh, uh, Miss Gillis. I I really appreciate it. Oh, you're more than welcome. Mm -hmm. I'll uh I'll I'll set this up and we'll get you on the on the call at, at eleven o'clock. Okay. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you too. All right, bye bye. Okay. So that's a good visit. This is like the totally opposite of the world we normally live in. Our normal world is open visitation 24 seven and, and a family member can spend the night. And here, when they're in the most stressful situation, they can't be there at all. 
I'm the Zoom expert, I guess, on the floor, and that's what uh, I get called for a lot of times. We've been using Zoom to be able to communicate a few times a day with the patient's family. So the pa they family can see the patient and talk to them. And so Aaron has been able to be a major link between the family, the patient, and the healthcare team in having that communication. He's just like a daily breath of fresh air for the family to be able to have that connection. I'm really grateful to Trisha. Her acceptance of me on the team has helped me with uh, relationships with the nurses, relationships with the doctors. I've just felt at home. So many things to coordinate. I'm glad you're doing it and not me. So much coordination. <laughs> oh, there he is, okay. Hi, Thomas. Right there. Hi, Thomas, my name's Trisha. I'm gonna take the um, iPad into his room now. Ready? Yep. Okay, let's go. Thanks so much. Oh, no problem. I'll see you guys in there. Come on in with me. Okay. It's been exciting to see uh, and we're hopeful and the family's very hopeful too. So uh, whenever they do an extubation of anybody who's COVID, they post a little picture of sunshine, you know, cause there's brighter days ahead. Give him your peace and God, we thank you for his family and for what their, uh, their prayers and the work that they, that they are hoping. And uh, we just pray God that, that your spirit be with them. We thank you for, uh, uh, for what you've done so far and what you will continue to do. And we continue to hope with you. And we pray these things in your name. Amen. Okay, blessings. I'll stick in for a little bit. Hey, baby. Oh, look at this smile. We miss you. The proning team has been an amazing addition to our interprofessional team for our ICU. And they're great at helping us reposition because of their expertise as physical therapists, occupational therapists, and athletic trainers. So essentially we're helping the nursing staff and the physicians to prone the patients so they can breathe more effectively. When we flip them over, uh, we're seeing that some of their oxygenation numbers are going to increase, uh, sometimes even instantaneously. The most rewarding part of it all for sure is coming in after a couple days off and someone who's been here since the beginning with us is finally extubated and on an upper floor and a lot healthier. It's like the best reward to come in and do this job. It is tough in some places. It's like a, it's a roller coaster. It's exciting, it's scary, it's, uh, it's great news, it's bad news. All I can do is keep breathing <laughs> and uh, keep going, you know, because we've got a lot more cases uh, to go. I think trying to pause and reflect on um, kind of the magnitude of all this, and when you really think about it, it it's it's kind of mind boggling. I've been a nurse, next month will be 46 years, and I've never seen anything like this. And I think you see the spirits of people come out. Another word you hear people say is, I think we all have a lot of grit. And that's grit and grace and, um, and the creativity of people during this time has been heartwarming. And um, all of those things together continue to strengthen my soul and help me and energize me to come back and do it another day. I mean, it's just been an amazing time. COVID-19 has changed all of us. We have seen the impact of it. No matter what the devastation or what the, the, the terrifying nature of this is, there is a light to be found and that there is a meaning to be found. May you learn to use this illness as a lantern to illuminate the new qualities that will emerge in you. May you trust this light to clear a path through all the fog of old unease and anxiety until you feel arising within you a tranquility profound enough to call the storm to stillness. May you find the wisdom to listen to your illness 
Ask why it came, why it chose your friendship, where it wants to take you, what it wants you to know, what quality of space it wants to create in you, what you need to learn to become more fully yourself, that your presence may shine in the world.